You're still live on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Let's move to our first major topic for today now. Uh, we're once again speaking with uh, Mr. Ambrose Iboke, who's uh, joining us from Inugu State. Uh, the conversation is centered around the People's Democratic Party and, you know, breaking news that seven members of its National Working Committee have resigned. Some of the papers report that it is because of a crisis with regards to the leadership of Uche Secundus. Um, it says that uh, those who resigned include a Deputy National Financial Secretary, Deputy Legal Advisor, Deputy National Auditor, the Deputy National Publicity Secretary, and the Deputy Women uh, Leader and Deputy Organizing uh, Secretary of the Party. Um, and, and also, the uh, All Progressive Congress and their, their Ward Congress is under crisis, uh, which of course has also made the news. But we'll say good morning to Ambrose Iboke once again. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. All right, so let's start, you know, mostly with, you know, the crisis with the PDP. How much damage do you think this does to the party? Well, uh, first of all, uh, um, it was a shocker that this uh, happened. I, I, I didn't see that coming, and I'm sure many people didn't see that coming. Uh, because uh, PDP over the years have been capable, uh, have shown enough capacity to take care of its problems, except when it started uh, having issues uh, uh, somewhere between 2013 and 2014 when the new PDP emerged. So for a, a long time, they, they kept uh, the party intact. And then when the Dino Melayes and the Sarakis left, that is where the issues in the party started uh, have, uh, uh, coming to the uh, fore. Uh, this present one, uh, there's something that is very interesting that is happening in this resignation saga. Uh, we noticed that what has happened mostly is that the deputies were the ones resigning. So this brings out a lot of questions. Why are the deputies resigning? Is it that they didn't have a working relationship with the substantive uh, heads of those units? Because most of the people that have resigned are the deputies. So why, why, what is happening? Were there, is there a grievance that was not being addressed over time? Were they being sidelined? Were they being uh, not carried along in decisions made by the substantive heads? Uh, so these are the questions that uh, can be answered. Or is there a, a, a thought, uh, you know, uh, in the hand of Esau, as we say uh, dramatically, that is propelling these people to take the action? But whatever her angle we look at it, it is not, it is not good for the party. And the party should do everything as quickly as possible to reconcile uh, these uh, uh, aggrieved uh, ESCO members and bring back the party together. Let's, let's now also focus a little bit more on the Uche Seconders controversy um, and those you know, who may not want his leadership and those who say that he has not been able to carry the party uh, you know, well enough. Um, what's your response to to that? And is that a big enough reason for the uh, the crisis that we are seeing today? Well, for me, uh, I, I don't see in Nigeria we see leadership as something that is do or die. Uh, if you say you want to lead a political party and the people you are leading are saying uh, they don't want to, but on the other hand, the leadership of the party is saying that there's only a few people that are saying that a negligible few in the party that is being vociferous and saying that they don't want the leadership. So when crisis like this happen, the first best thing to do is to call for a convention. And when the conventions are called, then you can do what, you know, you can elect whoever you want to elect, and then the politics will take place. But what has happened over the years, uh, we've been caught recently, uh, is strange, it's becoming strange, where conventions are being um, avoided by both parties so i don't know what i don't know, know when the pdp did this convention last or when the apc did this convention last and it is only through this convention that you can actually uh, select elect or ratify your leaders so uh, parties should not uh, shy away from conventions and the rest of let them hold this and let them so that is only when the leadership can validate its authority or the people can say we don't want you and then go and get what they want and so if there, if there are no conventions and the thing is being avoided, we will continue having these kind of monumental issues across party lines. 
Okay, um, Mr. Iboke, something I wanted to bring up regarding this PDP conversation. Um, these um, leaders of the National Working Committee who resigned, you know, gave an expose yesterday saying that there was a lack of financial transparency and they went on to challenge, you know, all leaders in Nigeria to go ahead and probe how monies have been spent that was generated from the sale of forms. Um, do you think this is coming as a black male? Because, I mean, they've been in this party all along. They're aware of all these discrepancies is happening so why now and what exactly should the EFCC and other um, financial crimes units begin to do about that I don't uh, believe uh, the expose as you call it um, uh, when these people come out and make this kind of statement uh, and they take these actions resign they want to justify the resignation based on altruistic reasons and that is always the uh, posturing that is done in our political space uh, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not uh, fooled by that. Uh, most of this resignation are things that are done on personal basis, that is, that for personal grievances, uh, either personally as, a, as an individual or uh, as a representative of a, party, of a power block. So, um, so the, 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 the financial, uh, you know, lack of financial transparency that they brought on board is just a smoke screen that uh, they are using to shield the main issues on ground. They should tell us what is the main issues on ground. And stop uh, okay, Mr. Iboke, uh, playing to the gallery. Mr. Iboke, um, you say this is like a smoke screen, but um, there's there's some evidence that he put out. They said that, um, that first of all, they're petitioning the anti-graft agencies, the EFCC, the IP, ICPC, to scrutinize um, close to 10 billion naira that was allegedly accrued to the PDP's purse from 2017 to date. And they said that um, Uche Secondus avoided the use of the bank accounts of the PDP and used the um, bank accounts of one Morufu Nigeria Limited as a conduit pipe for financial mismanagement. You think this is not something, uh, you think there's nothing here to, to, to investigate? Is that what so, you're saying? In 2017, till 2021 is four years how can you sit as a member of the national working committee of a political party and allow your members to pay into a private or corporate account that is not a pdp account the story does not add up so if you have allowed that to happen then you are first of all you are crying four years later that's that we need to prove we need to probe further because why will members of a political party in the first place pay into a private account other than that of the party so why they have raised this issue they have, have raised it like when the thing started or would have told their members not to do that and if that have begun since 2017 they would have gone to court as validated members of the party and members of the esco of the national working committee they would have gone to court to challenge that financial uh, uh, financial uh, immorality, I'll call it, because you cannot pay, you cannot ask your party members to be paying things that are credible to the party, be it a sale of form, be it a membership, be it whatever, be it donations or whatever to the party to private account. That happened first year, second year, third year, fourth year. So uh, that is why I say that you know these things they don't add up because if they really do. Why did you too quiet? Why did you even have, allow that to happen in the first place? Why didn't you raise the alarm since? But oh. that is not late. Raising the alarm now, let them allow the ESCC and the ICPC to do their job, and then we will watch and see the outcome. But okay. I am not still convinced that why they resigned was for altruistic reasons. All right, Mr. Ibuke, okay. um, yeah, I'm going. I'm going to go back um, again um, and get your view on. Um, as an opposition party, I, I believe that there are expectations for the People's Democratic Party. And you had earlier mentioned that with the, you know, with the you know, failure of the PDP to stand firm as an opposition party, it basically leaves Nigeria in a one-party state, uh, and, you know, is, which is not very good for Nigeria's democracy like you, you know, had described earlier. But do you think that Uche Sekondas has you know, been able to carry the party effectively as an opposition party um, seeing, of course, the you know defections that have happened in the last you know, couple of months and years, and also seeing the strength and the belief that the Nigerian people, most importantly, the belief that the Nigerian people still have in the People's Democratic Party. Do you think that you know Uche Sekondos has been able to keep that uh, party uh, strong enough? 
Well, uh, the, the way the Nigerian political space is arranged is that uh, the party chairman, the national party chairman, can only work as far as his members, especially the governors, allow him to do so. Because the, the owners of the party is not the party chairman. The owners of the party go beyond the party chairman. And any party chairman can be removed through convention. So um, for the current party chairman of the PDP to do what? Look at the way the APC party chairman was removed, uh, Mr. Adam Soshomole. So the, the, the powers to remove of, uh, or, you know, elect a political party, uh, chairman of a political party, resides with the members of the party. Um, therefore, when you say uh, uh, Mr. Uche Secondos is not doing, uh, is because he, 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 he has feelings and people are leaving the party, what are the party members themselves doing about this? So if the party members want him to stay, the power blocks within the party want him to stay, that is why he's still there. If they don't want him to stay, he will not be there. So uh, that is their intra arrangement as a political party, and they are entitled to it. But what we are saying as people, as citizens, is that the, uh, the party, PDP as a party, should wake up to its responsibility of playing a credible opposition, a vociferous opposition, and a strategic opposition to tackle whatever the, uh, the ruling party is doing, just like what the APC did to uh, PDP when they were in opposition. That is the kind of, so that they can put the ruling party on their toes. That is what an opposition does. Yeah, but, but, but the there's, there's also there's people, people who would... Intra-crisis and like, rest, okay. then it, it jeopardizes the whole process. Yeah, but there's also people who will criticize the uh, manner with which the APC, uh, you know, stood as an opposition party, you know, before it eventually took over power. There's people who've said that they used very crude means and that's not the you know method of the PDP, and that's not what they've been known for. So, are you saying that they should you know do pretty much the same thing that the APC did in the build up to the elections in 2015, um, or you know is it possible that the PDP has their own way of being an opposition party? What would you suggest you know if you were in that position to suggest? What would you suggest you know should be the manner the PDP should stand as an opposition party? As a PR consultant myself, I know that you can always drive your message without using hate speech, without using uh, throwing dirt on people, uh, without using insightful languages and the rest. You can drive home your point. So, but the aspect I am talking about uh, uh, that I think we should be regulated uh, as an opposition party is the aspect of relentlessness. That the APC as a political party, when it was in opposition, did not allow the PDP to rest on its oars. Every action taken by the PDP were, was scrutinized, was dissected, and then the, the loopholes, they brought up the loopholes and then fired it up. The only aspect we don't agree with is, for example, when you, are, when you call it, when you call, carry a coffin, for example, and you say RIP to a sitting president or call a, a, a city first lady hippopotamus, or say a city president is clueless. Those kind of languages and gutter languages that should not be allowed in any lexicon of uh, informed people. But aside that, the APC played its role very well by putting the PDP on its toes when it was in opposition. So that is the kind of thing we want PDP to do now. The style should be, uh, call out Lockwoodino did well when he started, all of a sudden he, he fizzled out. And only Sunday two was doing it, and then all of a sudden we didn't hear anything again. What we expect the PDP to do is to dig out the dirt, to dig out the mud, to do investigation, do uh, do intelligence, and bring out things that are happening, and use it as a as a tool of propaganda, as a tool for uh, for you know making your uh, ruling party be on its toes. As far as that, that is what it, it, that is what it is to be the opposition party. We see the examples in the UK Parliament. We see it in the uh, in American uh, uh, Senate and the, the House, where the opposition what they want to do is they, they do a policy. You dissect the policy, all the, the happenings, the actions taken by government, the executive orders, the the, the failures. The, you no, know, so that the ruling party can be on its toes. And once we have that, then we can always be you know a better society for what we are. Remember the 1966, uh, 60 to 1966. There was even an op opposition leader in the parliament. That is why in the parliamentary system, we even have it recognized that an opposition leader was in the house. Where they, so because they know that the danger of 
allowing the ruling party on a cruise on, on a cruise ride. They know the danger. Those who brought out democracy know the danger of that. And that's why they always put that. Okay, Mr. So the PDP should, you know, put his hands in order and play that role. Nigerians need them to play that role. Okay, talking about the role that is supposed to play as an opposition party, um, Aminu Tambo, our governor of Sokoto State and chairman of the PDP Governors Forum, um, put out a statement yesterday saying that the People's Democratic, Democratic Party is the only hope of good governance in Nigeria. Um, given all the challenges and internal problems in the party, um, do you see that as a likelihood? Do I say that as? As a likelihood. And also, there are so many other political parties in Nigeria coming up now. You know, uh, there's the, you know, several other political parties who seem to want to, you know, put up a national coalition, especially with the third force that Jaga has been speaking of. But the PDP um, are insisting that they are the only hope of good governance in Nigeria. So what do you think about that? Is that statement um, valid? It's a matter of that my just like uh, what we used to say, my my car is bigger than yours, or my house is bigger than yours. Uh, statement. Uh, every party has a right to sell. I mean, what Tambo is just selling, selling his uh, his party to the Nigerian uh, uh, populace, to the Nigerian citizens who will eventually be the voters in uh, 2023. So we will see all those kind of statements coming up uh, very soon. Uh, every party believes that it is the best party to rule Nigeria. So it's not something um, strange. It's just been, uh, of course, as the number one, as the chairman of the PDP Governors Forum, as a, a very strong stakeholder in the party, his work is to sell the party to Nigerians. And uh, if he says his party is the best, of course, he's using the marketing language to sell his party. And that is allowed in politics. Well, right. talking about the good governance he mentioned, you know, the internal situation of a party should be able to give us an insight into what might play out when they, you know, have the helm of affairs of the country. Um, do you actually think that the PDP can guarantee good governance in Nigeria um, with the way it's standing as an opposition? Uh, first of all, when we use the word good governance in Nigeria, I don't think we know the indices of good governance across board, uh, be it across party lines. Nigerian citizens themselves have not been able to grasp what is good governance. Because when you go across the board and ask people what is good governance, uh, they will give you different reports. So when uh, Mr. Uh, Alaji Tambawa is speaking of good governance, from what perspective? He has not told me the perspective he's using. He has not told me the indicators he's using. He has not told me the parameters that he's using to uh, explain or extrapolate what he means by good governance and that, he will give, uh, that the party will give us good governance. The same thing with most uh, uh, people. So until as a country we try to First of all, uh, articulate what is good governance. What are the indicators of a good governance? Uh, of good governance, and then what, what do we really see them? Because um, what we call good governance in Nigeria is uh, basically what is the right of citizens already. You know, for example, roads, building hospitals, schools, and that. that is taken. That is a taking in any democracy. That is an established fact. That is a natural phenomenon. So, if good governance, if good governance ends with that. Then, right, some other people see good governance as employment opportunities. Some other people see it as infrastructural development. Some other people see it as giving appointments to their own people from their own particular side of the country or community or from their profession. So, this case, Nigeria has not been able to define what good governance is. And anybody can come out and say, we'll give you good governance or I'll give you the best governance. But as I say, these are all marketing uh, strategies. You are selling your political party. And you use the right the nomenclature, you use the, you use the positive uh, energy to sell your political party. And it's allowed in the political space. Uh, what, would you, what would you say the PDP still needs to do in order to win the hearts of the Nigerian people again? Um, you know, many people have you know, spoken in favor of abandoning the two major political parties, the PDP and the APC, with the next general elections. There's also those who say never again to the PDP, regardless of, you know, how they feel about the current administration. Um, you know, and of course, it might be one of the things that uh, which is a understand. Of course, the members of the party itself have been criticized with not being able to show that, you know, they have they are truly a better option. Um, and so in what ways would you say that the PDP can, you know, still find some goodwill with the Nigerian people and make the Nigerian people look at them as, you know, an option? Uh, I'm surprised that Nigerians are still making decisions as whether which party is better, whether it's PDP or APC. 
Uh, for me, there are no basis for those comparisons uh, because uh, the politicians who are in APC today, uh, most many of them were in PDP yesterday. Uh, some are in APC today. Tomorrow they may go back to the PDP. So um, there are no really any serious demarcations between the parties across party lines. So saying that um, whether PDP has that sound, 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 what we are looking at, the politicians themselves, Nigerians should look beyond the parties. That is, the parties are not the problem. It is ourselves as a people that are the problem. So even if you like create the third force or the fifth force or the tenth force with the political arrangement we have now, it is not the party, political party name that we rule. It is the people that we, uh, we have to engage with as our leaders and the citizens as well as the followers. Therefore, the PDP as a political party should quickly put its house in order. They cannot afford to go close to an election uh, uh, arrangement with this kind of fractured arrangement where, where the, uh, the serious members of the National Working Committee are resigning. So the first thing is quickly to uh, get a reconciliation team uh, to mediate. If they like, they can get professionals to mediate and then quickly call the agreed uh, people to all, uh, together and see how they can quickly resolve this in a, in, a, in a very short time so that they can come back together and then put their house in order. Because we really need a credit. We need, we need a very, very um, uh, we, 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 a bustrous election. We want to see political parties show up credible candidates. We want to see what Nigerians want to have options, you know, uh, to, to vote for. And we, we want all the political parties, the major political parties to be held so that they can provide those options for us. Okay, Mr. Ibo, okay, you've uh, gave some suggestions on what the PDP needs to do. You've also called for a national convention earlier in the show. Um, but right now, we have word that uh, governors and the People's Democratic Party have basically scheduled an emergency meeting to discuss this. They say they have instituted an internal conflict resolution mechanism. What do you think or expect to be the outcome of that? Do you maybe foresee um, some of these leaders who resigned coming back to the PDP after, you know, they all worked things out? Or what's your prediction? When, when, when commanders have grievances and you don't attend to them, they decide to make a point by, you know, taking actions so that you can take them seriously. I think that's what, what has happened. So whatever it is, I know that, as the PDP governors have said, they have internal party reconciliation strategies and mechanisms that can make it work. Uh, maybe they resigned as a way of stating that they were not being listened to, they were not uh, being carried along or something else is happening that they needed to bring to the attention of the governors. Because as it stays, in any political party arrangement in Nigeria, it's actually the governors that are the power blocks in, in, in the political parties. Therefore, it is good that the governors are looking into it. Maybe the National Working Committee uh, ESCO, uh, Executive Council did not, take, uh, did not look into it critically. That is why it snowballed into this... Uh, uh, issue of uh, mass resignation. Um, let's, uh, let's wait for the outcome of what the uh, governors will do, but I'm sure that they, sh they should be able to come out uh, with solutions, because these are seasoned politicians and uh, administrators. They should be able to come out with a solution to this eternal crisis. Is there a role you think uh, uh, the likes of Atiku Abubakar and former President Goodluck Jonathan can still play um, in all of this? Who? I'm asking, is there a role you think uh, Atiko Abubakar and uh, former President Gulag Jonathan can still play um, in settling the, the, these uh, crises in the PDP? I just see no members of the party. I mean, they are, they, are, they are looked upon as party leaders. So the governors have moved in, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that at the governor's level is going to be resolved. If there, are, if there will not be resolved, the, the leaders can come in. They are all leaders of the party. And every leader of the party has a role to play to ensure that their party, of every political party, have a role to play to ensure that their party uh, remains intact. And uh, every political party was formed to win elections. They were not just formed for mere existence. So if you have to win elections, you have to be serious. Your party has to be intact. And then dissensions have to be at the barest minimum so that you can remain focused. That is the essence of political party arrangement. Okay, finally, before we go, I, I want you to, you know, speak with regards to something that I brought up, I think, last week, you know, and that is, you know, the redirection of political parties, you know, in the, towards the 2023 general elections. Um, there's a lot of Nigerians who are, you know, looking to see young and progressive and, you know, different mindsets, you know, in these political parties. 
Um, would you advise that these major political parties start to think in that direction and look out for candidates that you know fit into the you know picture that uh, Nigerians are looking towards, um, adopting younger, you know, more vibrant, more progressive candidates to you know fly the flag for them in 2023? The problem of Nigeria is not the age of its political actors. The problem of Nigeria is the mindset of the citizens. Age has nothing to do with how you rule a country. The United States we are using as our own examples always when we talk about um, you know, democracy. Uh, I mean, in the last five many years, we've been shown that you know, old people can also rule the United States of America. People in their 70s, and uh, I think by the time Biden is leaving office, he should be 80 something. Uh, Israel, that is doing very well, is a, is a society, is ruled by gerontocrats. So, I mean, right from uh, in the 70s of the, those days, we have the Shimon Perez, in the late in Zakrabi, and a lot of them, old men, you know, that I mean, ruling uh, Israel. And Israel is doing very well. So, we also have countries that are ruled by young people, and they are doing well. So, it is not about the age. Political parties should look at that to about dedication, altruistic and nationalistic disposition. That is what we work. What can we do for our country to make our country better? So if we don't have that mindset as citizens, if it's the citizens of Nigeria that will get elected into political offices. So if we as a people we are not have a regenerated mindset to know that country comes first. Then we will be where we are. So it is not. A, it's not. A, so do people talking about or oh, give it to younger people? And we have seen go to the SDGs, student union government in the universities. You will be appalled at what is happening there. Are they not young people? Absolutely. Go to Nan, Go to NANS, Nigeria, National Association of Nigerian Students. Go to other places where we have youth, even in uh, special advisors as governors, as commissioners, ministers, and so it is not about age. So we should, more, we should focus on the what is really our problem and not about age. All right. Amber Sigboke, thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. Thank Truly you. Truly enjoyed the discussion. Uh, thank you. Have a great day ahead. All right. Stay with us to take a short break. And when we come back, we're moving into talking, you know, now mostly about the All Progressive Congress and the crisis with the award congresses. And, of course, uh, me, Malab Buni, uh, and, uh, you know, some of all of that. The Vice President, Yemi Oshimbaju, is in the news this morning as leading, you know, the efforts to sort out the legal, um, you know, challenges they might be having with the award congresses. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs> 